Hey, what's up guys, Synapse here. In this video, I'm gonna go behind the scenes in the Soda Poppins intro. This time, we're gonna look at the shatter effects. And we're also gonna take a look at Soda Poppins' name as it forms. Hey guys, if you like these behind the scenes videos, make sure you hit me up with a subscribe, a like, and let me know in the comments what you think. All right, let's get right into it. You might notice something funny about the way I named my After Effects. It turns out I was a little bit excited about this project and I didn't know what to call the final version. So let's just say that I'm very creative. Uh, oh, shit. Seems like uh, I just come up with bad words when I can't think of something. It's kind of funny. Fuck. So this is the uh, Kappa scene. And Chance told me, instead of his name shattering, that he wanted to see something funny here. So we added the Kappa guy and I made him a 3D object. So first of all, to get this to work, I turned the Kappa dude into a 3D object in Cinema 4D and we had the Druid Kitty just smash his face in. It wasn't too hard to do. This was actually a last minute request by chance, like right before we made the intro live. If you guys wanna see how I make these, check out the live stream. I work on these things live all the time and then we get together and play some games. Let me pan around here so we can get a, a good idea of what this looks like. It's pretty cool. There's the dude's face and I just projected the emote onto his face. Uh, I think in Illustrator, I created an outline of his face, imported it into Cinema 4D, then I extruded it and then I projected this image right onto the Kappa face. Then comes this guy who's a fully rigged druid. Uh, I got this, I extracted this guy from WoW Model Viewer and I uh, had to use the old version because the new version does not support rigging, at least not at the time that I made this video. So if you want to be able to extract rigged characters from WoW Model Viewer, you gotta use an old version with an old version of WoW and I can hook you up with that uh, if you're interested on my website because I knew this would happen when we updated to WAD. So this dude shatters and if I do a quick render from this angle, you can see that his face is nice and reflective and a little bit shiny. I don't know what happened. I think there was some backlighting back here that made his face kind of explode with a lot of light in it, which I thought was really cool. It ended up coming out really cool, so I kept it in there. So after I rendered this out, we bring it into After Effects. Holy smokes, there are so many layers and keyframes in the final version. A little bit of looks, curves, exposure, and glow to get those eyes really bright and to really bring out that light effect. Is that awesome? And uh, it is time remapped to the music a little bit. So that's why you see like lots of these layers like this kind of stacked like this. I did some hard cuts, so it kind of matches the music. It gives that feeling of movement. And then here, these particles are just falling. Let me tell you something that didn't make it into the intro. Um, this shatter scene wasn't originally the Kappa guy. It was actually Soda Poppin's name. And uh, this was in the original version where he uh, swipes his name and the name shatters. And it actually said Team Soda Poppin on it. And the text just, and then from there, we transition into this part. This is one of my favorite effects. I just think it looks really cool. And that kind of bluish purple light in the background uh, makes it look like really super cool. And you can see the text is highly reflective. So you can see the reflection of all these particles as they are piling in to form the name. And so this was also done in Cinema 4D here with a couple of cool transform effects that I used uh, to make the name form from all of these like shattered pieces. I used a combination of Nitro Blast and a Transform plugin so I could get the text to kind of form like this. And I just put a really cool camera angle in to follow the shatter as it forms the name. And uh, there's just some like particles out here in space to kind of make it look like, you know, there's more stuff floating. I think the single most important thing is lighting. The lighting can make or break everything. Uh, the other thing that's really important are the camera angles. The camera angles convince the viewer using the camera angles you know do you want movement do you want and the other thing is texture here we use this really reflective uh texture in the text so just a few 
things to think about to really bring these things to life. So that's the text forming. It looks nice and shiny. I also added a little bit of exposure curves, you know, some glow to it to kind of bring out those shiny spots. And then we go into the one, two, three part. And that's what this is right here. You can't see that it's one, two, three quite yet, but what it really is, what you're looking at there, and you won't see this anywhere else except for behind the scenes, is it's actually the three that we're looking at uh, right here in this scene where you see this dark object with like shiny corners. And what I did was I got the camera to kind of pan around on the three. You can see the camera is just carefully following the three as it spins. And it's like a super zoomed in lens, 150 millimeters. From the camera's perspective, it's like this, where you can see the three rotating. And I brought this into After Effects. So the three wasn't so dark and mysterious originally. It actually looked like this. Uh, this is how it came out of Cinema 4D, which is kind of ugly in terms of the colors. Uh, this top texture, though, I really like the way it looks. So I just went with it. And what I did to kind of compensate for that weird color was I just added some really intense color grading to it where I added a lot of deep curves, like a deep S curve, pumped up the exposure a little bit so it was really bright and shiny. And then I added uh, some lens flares. And if I take away the lens flare, you can see what it looks like with and without it. The lens flares are really important. I think it really brings it that epic look. If I just keyframe the lens flare with those edges, the lens flare will move. And it also adds to the fact of this immense motion that's going on. I mean, it looks cool even without the lens flare and I added some glow so it's kind of shiny and blurry. I did all this on the live stream. And then finally, here's the text coming together in After Effects the one, two, three, and it's meant for you to spam one, two, three when it finally connects right there. It's pretty crisp, I would say, but it's all about those textures uh, that are on the surface. So when you actually render it, they start to look a lot cooler. And honestly, they don't even look that cool in Cinema 4D, but After Effects really brings it home. All right, guys, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you like this content, please hit me up with a subscribe. I'm gonna be doing some more of these uh, thank you very much for your time. Everybody's time is important. And the fact that you spent a couple of minutes uh, here watching the video means a lot to me. Cheers, guys. I'll see you next time. All right, guys, that's it for this video. You guys drive the content for this channel. So if you like this video and you learned something, please subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comments. Good luck and have fun.